Welcome inside the Tuesday Battle of Ontario edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. I'm Ross Levitan from Locked On Senators alongside Mike DiStefano from Locked On Leafs discussing the playoff picture in the Eastern Conference and not only that, but the goalies in general. Which one would you want to have on your team? Game 7, win or go home? We're going to draft our top four each plus the first actual battle of Ontario since Mikey and I started teaming up on this. So we'll get into some trash talk there and a whole lot more. This is the Locked On NHL podcast, your team every day. Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen on this Tuesday, April 19th. Mikey, there are less than seven games remaining for every Eastern Conference team. And the final, talk about anti-suspenseful, but the New York Islanders officially eliminated from playoff contention. So we know the eight teams. Who's your favorite? Because that's what's coming up on the power rankings this week. We're going to rank the top eight teams in terms of who we think is most likely to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, that's a it's an interesting question, and and you know it changes almost every week. But I, I mean, the Florida Panthers are an absolute wagon right now. They've won ten in a row, and they look at Tampa. They're kind of floundering here late down the stretch. So there was a while there where I would have said Tampa hands down. Florida's starting to look like the team to beat in the East, and especially when you look at the Freddie Anderson injury that happened in Carolina. Now, you don't know, is can Antti Ranta, first of all, hold up? That guy's put together with, with glue himself. And it gets a little dicey at this point. I think Tristan Jari, too, an injury there in Pittsburgh. The goaltending situation in, in Washington is a little up in the air. In Toronto, it's a little up in the air. There's really a lot of question marks right now around the East uh, with a couple of injuries and goalie situations not being 100%. But there's one team specifically that does have a right net. I think that's Andre Vasilevsky. But out in front of him hasn't been particularly too good of late. So I might have to go with uh, the team out in Sunrise and go with the Florida Panthers as the team to beat in the East. The Florida Panthers' only loss in the Claude Giroux era, which is 13 games long, is to your Toronto Maple Leafs, Mikey. Yeah. And I mean, they've yeah. beaten the Leafs at the same time. Giroux's got 16 points in 13 games. We'll get into all that, but I say a Leafs win. Leafs got the win on Saturday night against Ottawa. We'd be remiss as the host of Locked On Leafs, Locked On Senators, not to get into that briefly. What was your overall impression of that game? Uh, it was a bit of a mixed bag. I think I could say from a Maple Leafs perspective, there was some good, there was some bad. Um, I think what the Sens got up to a 3-1 lead at one point, and then yep. Toronto kind of pushed back, and it became the Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews show. I think you would even have to agree. The things yeah, that they were Marner doing, was unreal. Oh, just a puck on his stick, dude. Like this guy. I, I Honestly, you tell me if you think I'm crazy or not, okay? I'm ready to call him the best winger in hockey right now. The way that this dude is playing right now, who's better? Two came to mind. Kucherov and, and Kaprizov came to mind right away. Okay, what what makes them better? Which one of those two kill penalties? Which one of those two are leading the NHL in points since January 1st? Explain to me. How are well, they better? Since January 1st, I mean, that's a pretty – if if I could say Martin's which winger is – Okay, yeah, but Mar is outscoring both of those players anyways. Even you take – Well, he's entire, playing with one know. of the best goal scorers in NHL history, and you get two assists on every goal. So I'm not I'm saying kidding. that it's not him, but when you have the best shooter in the game, it's a little bit easier to get apples. Yeah, but I don't know if you watched the game against the Islanders, but Mitch Marner was just as good, and Matthews was not present. He was not in that game. Uh, the night after the one against the Senators. And you saw it happen. You saw it with your own two eyes, man. That guy, I know he plays alongside of Austin Matthews, but he is he is every bit as good and maybe even a little bit better right now than the Kucherovs, the Kaprizovs, the Huberdos, uh, Patrick Kane. I mean, this guy is legitimately doing it all on both sides of the ice too. I mean, it's not just about the points. The guy is an elite penalty killer, elite penalty killer since when doesn't it matter what you do on the defensive side of things 
Yeah, that, I mean, that's fair. And that's the only time that he doesn't play with Austin Matthews, but I don't think he's doing as much scoring on the PK. But uh, he is. Think- they have the number one, number one short. They've scored, what, 13 shorthanded goals, and he's factored in on more than half of them. So he is scoring a lot on the PK, and he's setting things up and making plays happen. So with with Austin Matthews at five on five, he's played 703 minutes, and he's played less mm-hmm. than 200 without him. Like yeah. Yeah, They're glued at the hip. And last show we did. We were laughing at how Mike Babcock wouldn't put those two together. No, it's, it's a perfect match made in heaven. And that shouldn't really take away from him. But, I mean, you just have a bigger sample size and a guy who's got two Stanley Cups shoved in his ears in Nikita Kucherov. I feel like he's the guy to beat here, if anyone. Yeah, sure, Kaprizov's got having a nice season tied in points, I may add, with Mitch Marner and has nine more goals than him as well. But he's right in the mix. And I think that in itself should be pretty solid to hear. Mitch Marner last year only playing half the season alongside uh, of, of Austin Matthews. I mean, it was a little bit more than half, but it was, it wasn't the full season it was first team right winger the year before when he played in Austin in um, no, was it the two years ago when he played, it was Tavares, his first season in the NHL, no Matthews Tavares. I don't think it's a, uh, 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 the fact that he scored a career high, what, 47 goals, I think it was, alongside Mitch Marner, I don't think that that was Johnny T all of a sudden reaching new heights. I think there was someone next to him making the magic happen for him. Yeah, he's a hell of a player. Just There's saying. no question about that. Just saying. Just saying. Well, the two best players on the ice on Saturday night were both, I mean, electric playmakers in terms of Mitch Marner and then Tim Stutzla gets two goals. Is he public enemy number one in in Toronto? I don't understand. I guess there's the whole Brendan Gallagher. We got into those comments, but it was just such a nothing play, in my opinion. No goal in the power play. The game's over, and it just seemed like it caught fire that apparently he's embellishing. The the Nylander penalty? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was a ridiculous... It's a brutal penalty, but that's not a dive. How is that not a dive? The guy was peeling off and realized, oh, I'm getting a slight tug and act like the dude was shot in the arm and took a fall on the ice. He didn't fall on the ice. He didn't fall on the ice. Timmy Stu. He did not touch the ice on that play. No, but he was he was peeling off regardless. No, he wasn't. He was going in for a four check, then saw that the, the door was open. Up. We got to pull this up. We gotta I would love up. to. I we got to pull it up. But he was... He was going in and then realized that he wasn't getting to the puck and was peeling off the ice. And then I noticed that he was getting a little bit of a tug and then decided to sell that call. He sold How did he it. sell it? If you sell so it, aren't you looking at the official? He literally just turned around and I don't think and you have to look ice. at an official. You just have to know that officials are looking and sell it properly. You don't have to make it so clear and obvious, but it was pretty obvious from an outsider's perspective that. Yeah, uh, which is what you are, eh? an outsider. Call. He was looking to get a call. I think, hey, let us know in the comments below. Let us know if you think, maybe if we can find that play, maybe we'll tweet it out or something like that. Uh, Let us know in the comments below if you think that that was a hockey play or if that was Timmy Stu being a little cheeky trying to get uh, his team uh, team a power play because I think it's more likely that uh, he wasn't caught off balance by Nylander and he kind of just decided to take it upon himself to sell that call a little bit. But you hey, think that's, so, just my eh? that's just my yeah, opinion. It is. it is your opinion. So we got it right here. Can we see this? I don't is know. This what up, Mikey? Up? No. <laughs> oh, all right. Never. Oh, here we go. We're we're new here on the. Here we go. Can we see this? No, you brought up something completely wrong. I don't know what you brought up. Here. All right, I'm. We're out. Let us know in the comments. You've seen it if you got Twitter. <laughs> that that to say. I don't see it. And and to say that he dove, you, to dive, you have to end up on the ground. I don't know, a sell, it was a sell call. It was uh, an no, unnecessary play. And I just, I just get rattled because it takes away from all the good that this guy's doing. 25 points in his last 20 games. He's Everyone was so ready to say Lucas Raymond was far and away a better player. The gap was 15 points earlier in the year with Raymond yeah. leading Stutzla. The gap's at two right now. Hey, man, I'm, I, Stutz is a hell of a player. I'll, I'll 100% agree with you on that one. He's having a heck of a second half of the season um, now that he's healthy. And definitely he's, he's starting to shut up some of those haters from earlier in the year. That being said, 
And he's got a little bit of a reputation that he's building too. It's not dissimilar to the way that Brad Marchand has, has a reputation of, of what he does, or even Brendan Gallagher for that regard has a bit of a reputation himself. Um, it is what it is, but you can have a reputation and also be a good productive player at the same time. Right. If anything, I mean, Michael Bunting, you could say sometimes Nazem Kadri was known as a bit of a diver in a way here in Toronto for years, but it didn't, you know, disrupt people from thinking that he's a good player by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. And interesting. And that, and that's fair. He's a young player. He's 20 years old. And I think that he's shifty. I feel like it's more so less the guys that you mentioned and more like, I feel like Johnny Goudreau kind of had that title a little bit a while ago. It's these small shifty guys that are always moving and sometimes their balance isn't always the best. They kind of got the Bambi legs going. He's 20 years old. There's only like 10 players in the league younger than him. And albeit he's played 115 games, but uh, man, what a talent to watch. And yeah, he, he's starting to get a little hatred and I don't mind that. He can play the villain. It's just funny when the Sens have so many like hateable players like Parker Kelly, Austin Watson, Brady Kachuk, and like he's the guy who everyone's hating instead. Kind of funny in itself. And the reason why it really, I think, bothers Sens fans is because is the play that Brendan Gallagher referred to is a knee-on-knee collision that he missed the next two games due to injury yeah, so yeah yeah I, I, and it's like all the leaf fans like gallagher was right it's like dude he literally missed a week of play because of a knee on knee one of the greasiest plays in hockey and i'm not even saying it was nick suzuki's fault those plays happen you go for the check you miss but it's not a dive when you're going full tilt and you get a knee so i feel like that exaggerated and really set fire to this whole narrative there was a game earlier in the year and i'm not saying that he hasn't sold calls before because I, I feel like a lot of good players do he's third in the league and drawn penalties this season as well so you're going to draw a couple, and that's what skill players can do. But to say that he embellishes on a knee on knee and that kind of exploded this whole thing, it's a complete joke. You want to know what's the funniest stat? What? Uh, so you've got him who's third in the NHL in uh, in drawn calls. Do you know where Austin Matthews sits in the NHL in drawn calls? What no, I, I know that uh, McDavid's won. 198th. In drawn calls. Well, he drew a pretty weak one against the Sens in the first period on Zaitsev. <laughs> I bet you if you look at like per 60 minutes, I would almost guarantee that it's even worse. Uh, but like when you think about it, you talk about skill players, they draw calls. Dude, there's no one that's that's more puck dominant than, than Austin Matthews. It's ridiculous that that guy barely cracks the top 200 in penalties drawn. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, Bunting's a lot closer. Yeah, no, Bunting is 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 up there in terms of points per six or um, drawn penalties per sixty, two hundred and fifty fifth. Wow, two hundred and fifty fifth. That is insane. crazy. Check this out. This is a good list to be a part of. Hey, if you're Tim Stutzla, net penalty differential, top five: Connor McDavid, Kirill Kaprizov, Tim Stutzla, Elias Pettersson, and Nathan McKinnon there. And uh, M- M- Pettersson might be the most impressive in seventy five games, seventy three games. He's taken five penalties, which yeah. is is wild. Maybe hey, a bit lady, of a perimeter lady, player. Lady oh. Bing type of stuff there. Lady yeah, Bing for old Pete. No Petey. question. He's really picked it up since the start of the season. Hey, he started slow. He's he's back. But we'll see back to the West West Coast well, boys. He has. And and I made some money on the weekend betting for this guy. I certainly did. Ask got for him to score a goal. He cashed it. And I did that over at betonline.net. It is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, the NHL playoffs, and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. All right, Mikey. So. Got that one out of the way. My blood's boiling. Sens and Leafs done for the season series, but the Senators will play the Habs next Saturday. That one, mark it on your calendar. Tim Stutzla versus Brendan Gallagher for the first time since those comments we previously mentioned. It will also likely feature Carey Price, who was great to see. I know you're a Leafs guy. I'm a Sens guy, but the league is better when Carey Price is playing. 100%. 1,000%. And it was nice to see him finally get back onto the ice uh was it friday against the uh, against the, the Jets, islanders right? no it was against the islanders uh was his first game right so friday Sorokin stole islanders. the show what a one-upper a 44 save shutout yeah i know but uh yeah unfortunately i think but he went into the second period post a shot himself i think yeah, it was yeah. like nil nil going into the third yeah um you know it's it's great to see him out there and, and i think that it, it meant a lot to him 
to be able to get back out onto the ice. And uh, hopefully, you know, this does mean that carry price is, is round for the long haul. Obviously there was some, you know, that was a little bit up in the air at one point, whether it was Definitely. injury or mental health that he was dealing with, you know, and, and it, it's good that carry price is feels that he's good enough to come back and play both mentally and physically. And uh, you're absolutely right. The NHL way better with carry price in it, whether or not he's got a long-term future in Montreal, I think is up for debate just based on the fact that that's a team that, most likely entering a rebuild. And I don't know if you heard Carey Price's comments today, yep. but he spoke about how, um, you know, getting so close to the cup final and then not finishing it off, he's still figuring out how to reel from that. It still hurts him to this day. So you got to think that if this Canadians team's going into a rebuild, does he want to be a part of it? I don't know if that's the case. I know he's got uh, a lot of money and a lot of term left on the deal, but perhaps he will want to go and chase the Stanley Cup with a team that's certainly a lot closer than Montreal is. Uh, but that being said, at the end of the day, great to see Carey uh, back out there on the ice. He would typically be a top pick in what we're about to do, and we're going to discuss the goaltending situation as a whole in the Eastern Conference, or should we do that first before we get into our draft? Why don't we talk about some of the issues going on between the pipes in the East? Because there are massive question marks right now heading into the playoffs. Over the weekend, we saw a, a couple of big-time goaltenders kind of get sidelined here to injury. Freddie Anderson, a really strange tweak. He ended up getting an MRI, was negative on that one but you know with both of us being toronto guys or you lived there for a couple of years at least we both know the history of fred anderson um there's some injury history there he missed most of last season due to an injury he lost his starting role because he got injured and jack campbell kind of took the ball and ran with it um you know so whether or not he how long he's gonna miss i believe i saw he's week to week right now but it was a negative mri so hopefully that means that he won't miss too too much time because I don't really feel all that comfortable with Antti Ranta either, who, again, has dealt with a lot of injuries over the course of his career. Uh, and then Tristan Jari. I think, what was Jari, a foot injury? Like, broke his foot or something like that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so that's even more scary if you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan and, you know, hoping that uh, Gino and Sid can maybe pull through and get you one more championship. Gets a little more dicey when you're, got, when you're starting Casey DeSmith in that over Tristan Jari. So interesting situations going on in uh, in the East. You know, Jack Campbell missed the game last week with general soreness, was tired, which he had five weeks off ahead of that, and he played four games in a six-day span, and then, I can't go, I'm tired, man. I, I just need a day off. That's a little concerning. You know, so I, there's a lot of situations going on um, in the East where I don't know how solidified – goaltending is outside of probably tampa bay that might be it oh there's a couple others though and, and i think with that we can start what we're gonna do is out of the igor eight teams, igor, igor also igor <laughs> my number one pick yeah spoiler you rat you so we're gonna do this uh um snake style or just back and forth? i think like snake style is fair sure all right, and since I'm the former goalie, got the buckets in the background, I'll lead us off, and it's got to be Igor Shosturkin. I mean, I'm on record as saying this is my guy for a while for the heart, but you really just can't ignore what Austin Matthews is doing. But he, I, he still, in my opinion, should be nominated for the Hart Trophy. He's taken this Rangers team, and yeah, they were good, but now they're just absolutely like the class of the East. And I knew they were going to add the deadline. And we've already talked about how their additions have really helped out, but the backbone of this team, is a 935 save percentage in 50 starts. And that in itself, like he's almost played 100 games in his career and he's got a 928. Like this guy is just an elite goalie. He's an elite puck handler as well, which comes in handy. He's like a third defenseman back there. He's what people think Mike Smith is, where Mike Smith's a, a boomer bust, makes great plays, but also gives it away. Shesterkin's just smooth with the puck, man. He doesn't give it away. He's very smart, very focused. So I'm going to go with Igor Shesterkin as my number one pick. If it's game seven, if it's do or die, he's my goalie every day of the week. So is this the parameters? A game seven, do or yep. die, we get to pick a goalie. We're going through all eight of the starting goaltenders within the Eastern Conference, and we're building oh, it out. Unless you think there's a team that has two goalies that you'd rather before one. 
Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We could potentially go through that and do that as well. But that's the parameters of this draft, correct? Yep. Uh, just like a one-game playoff. Who do you trust? And and that's where we're rolling with. So 100%. to me, um, I can't believe that you – I mean, I know. as great as Igor Shosturkin is, are you forgetting – I've like, already written what? down your pick. Andre Vasilevsky did last year in Dura yep. Die Game 7 Elimination Games? Not once, not twice – not three times, but all four series clinching victories came via the shutout. Yeah. He's the king of you need one game, I'll give it to you. Andre Vasilevsky at number two is literally a steal. Yeah. Literally a steal. It's like it, it, you basically were – who was it that went like number one and two? And Michael Jordan went number three in the draft. <laughs> they knew what you just did. Like you're just a moron. Or how about Lafreniere and then Byfield? Now you're taking Stutzla at three. Yeah, um, again. Timmy's got more points than those two combined. They sure do. But there's a long time uh, before that draft. Now, I think the one thing fair. I will say, and the reason why maybe this is my separating fact, obviously I'm kidding about the draft thing. It's way too early. It's not even two full years. But do you not worry that he's played so much hockey the last two yeah. years? He, he's played over 50 games more than anybody else. He's still the best goalie in the world. Like, at the end yeah. of the day, it's, it's like Igor's playing out of his mind. But – Vasilevsky has been doing this for the last five, six years. Yep, that's so fair. I'll, I'll take a guy, you know, that I know gets ready for those one game, one and dones. Now it gets a little interesting. It definitely now, does. And are we assuming full health of these goaltenders? Yes, yes, for sure. Okay, okay. <sighs> Man, this is honestly so – like I don't even know where to go with this at this point. That's how sad it is. There's two goalies that you feel comfortable with. And then there is just an absolute cluster of guys. Yep. And we saw we saw playoff Jari in the bubble. <laughs> yeah, and I've so seen well. Freddie Anderson over the last little bit. Also Freddie Laleem. Not played terrifically in the playoffs. But you know what? He's having a terrific season this year. Um, he really is. He's going to be a Vesna candidate. And to me, I, I got to go, assuming full health, I think I'm going to go with Freddie Anderson because Freddie Anderson with the Carolina Hurricanes is different than Freddie Anderson in front of a brutal Maple Leafs team defensively. Carolina plays way better in front of him, and when Anderson sees pucks, he stops pucks. The problem is that wasn't the case in, in Toronto a lot of the time because of the brutal way that they played defensively. It wasn't a great uh, – they weren't too good in their own zone, let's just say that, and gave up way too many second, third chance opportunities on the guy. You don't see that happen too often in Carolina. They're pretty clean and tidy. So I'm going to go with Freddie with my third pick. Freddie, Yeah, Anderson. that's solid. I mean, he's got a 922 save percentage this year. So I could naturally just take the guy with the next best save percentage this year. But I might be going a little bit off the board here. And, and maybe there is no board, really, because I'm going through all these goalies. And at the same time, it's just kind of like, oh, man, there's there's not a whole lot separating these guys. But you know what? I'm going to go with the guy with the biggest differential between wins and losses this year. A guy who's really bounced his career back after being down in the dumps. I'm going with Sergei Bobrovsky. Only mm. six losses all year. And he's played 49 games. He's got six regulation losses in 49 games. So, Game seven, you need one, you need a win. I'm going to take the guy who's won the most games. Yeah, that's not a bad pick. It's not a bad pick. I think you're sitting there with the fifth pick as well. You're third yep. overall in the draft. He is selecting here. So I had the veteran, and now I'm going with the unknown, unproven guy, but a guy who's really jumped up my rankings in a oh, hurry. You're taking him, aren't you? You're I'm taking, taking Jeremy, Jeremy Swayman from the Boston Bruins, dude. Watching this guy play, he just plays with a ton of confidence. And I love the way that he handles the puck well. Just like I said, Igor, I feel like he's one of those guys who's quick to come out of his crease, challenges well, great rebound control. Hasn't had as much opportunity this year as maybe he would have expected coming in because he played really well in limited ice time last season, if I'm not mistaken. He's got 37 games under his belt this year and a 917 save percentage. So I'm going to go with the young kid, man. I'm going to say Jeremy Swayman is my third guy. Oh, were you ta were you going Swayman? Oh, that was a hundred percent going to be my next pick. Uh, it was definitely going to be Swayman. Nice. Um, I guess we're talking playoffs. Oh man, do I? Who do I trust most in the playoffs here? This is interesting. Now I might go. You talk about going off the board. This could be an, you know what? Oh, this is so tough. This is so tough. 
I got two picks here, actually. You do, so it makes it a little bit easier, and then you're leaving me to Tell you what, tell you what, Ross. Why don't you go ahead, and we can hear from our our, our friends over at Rock Auto, and as you're telling our good folks about uh, Rock Auto and what we can offer them, I'll ponder, I'll look at my draft board, and I'll have an answer for y'all on the other side. Well, if you have a flat tire, or if anything's wrong with your car... Go to rockauto.com. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. There's so many makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain to carry them all. So why endure the pointless and intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter literally does what you can do? On their computer, the only thing is they only have the brands that their warehouse happens to carry. You have access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Don't spend more, spend less, and support a family business. Serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you could ever need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil. You can even get your new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. All we ask is that you put locked on in their how-did-you-hear-about-us box. That way, they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com. All right, Mikey, you've been thinking. I honestly thought you were going to throw it back to me and tell me to pick to really make it easier for you to finish out my my foursome here. But you've got two picks in a row, and I want to hear the explanation for your first. I am going to shock the world with wow. these next two picks. I think I'm going to shock Eric Calgren. I will be taking Tristan Jari okay. with my third pick. And with my fourth pick, I'm going Linus Allmark. Wow. Linus Allmark will be my fourth goaltender who I feel comfortable going into the playoffs with. And why that is shocking is because I am the host of Locked on Leafs. And I left Jack Campbell right there, right for the picking. And that should tell you something about where I'm at and my comfort level with Campbell in comparison to some of the other goaltenders around the Eastern Conference heading into the playoffs. Yeah, you would you'd rather take the second goalie on the Boston Bruins. Holy moly. But now that leaves me with a decision to make because I don't have a whole lot of confidence in him either. Well, what else am I going to do? Am I going to take Spencer Knight? Am I going to take Brian Elliott? Am I really going to do that? Could oh, I possibly? Vanacek, Vanacek, Samsonov, no. Georgiev. Georgiev's out there. Yeah, for the you know what? He's he's probably where I'm leaning. It's unfortunate that like, Delkovich went to a playoff dud because he'd be he'd be an easy second choice. Who is Carolina's backup? Oh, Ranta. He Ranta. He'd get hurt five seconds into game one. Or five seconds into game seven, and that would leave me in a precarious situation. Yeah. Um, you know what? Wow. You're actually really making this tough on me. I'm I'm going back into the into the vault here because I need to see. Was it in the play in series then? Or was it in like did the stats not count? When did Spencer Knight play in the playoffs for? Wasn't that last season? Last playoffs? year, yeah. No, he played first round against Tampa. He Two was games, and he had a one. 933. I'm going, I'm going with Spencer Knight, man. I'm mm-hmm. I'm going with the unproven, but I think that he I mean he's the best goalie prospect in hockey, I would say, or best goalie under 22 years old. Uh what eleventh overall pick, thirteenth overall pick, something like that. I've actually got his page up uh I've got his page up here, and I'm really curious to figure out thirteenth overall pick in 2019 so for him if you just look at the numbers every level 930 930 930 he's just a stud so this year 909 you take away that game against ottawa where you got pumped for eight goals maybe that goes up to a 913 but i'm gonna go with the potential on that one and also because if you think that as the host of locked on centers i'm taking a maple leafs goalie in a playoff bracket it's just not happening so those were just uh do not draft to quote our friends at Elite Prospect. So yeah, I'm going with uh I'm going with Spencer Knight. So to recap, and yes, Mikey, I've been multitasking throughout this. So for our friends who are watching on YouTube, we hope everyone subscribes to the show on YouTube. We've got a very I think a good start, but we're trying to get this show to a thousand subscribers. 
trying to monetize it a little bit, have some fun. So if you listen to Locked On NHL, just go shoot us a subscription and you'll get great graphics like this one. We got Team Levitan, Team Stefano here. We're picking one game. Pick your goalie. I've got Igor Shosturkin, Sergei Bobrovsky, Jeremy Swayman, and Spencer Knight. And Mikey's got Andre Vasilevsky, Frederick Anderson, Tristan Jari, and Linus Olmark. So maybe we'll put this out on Twitter. You can follow me at Ross Levitan. You can follow Mikey at Mikey underscore Canuck. And we'll ask, which four would you trust the most? Are you happy with your four here? I know you're ecstatic getting Vasilevsky at two. Yeah, I, I think Vassy. I like my my top two. I like Jari. I know that last year was not great in the playoffs, but he's been a totally different human being this season. And if he's completely healthy, then I I, I like him as my third. Um, I Allmark was a little bit of a a, a roll of the dice, but yeah, I liked him in the off season. I I, I really did. I thought that he was going to be a, a solid goaltender and. If it wasn't for Jeremy Swayman just stealing the job, I think Omar would be the number one in Boston too. I mean, yeah. he, he hasn't had a terrible year either. Like, he hasn't oh. been terrific. I don't think it was quite the caliber that he was expecting, but I still think that he's a quality goaltender. And, and Boston, think about it. You go from Tuka Rask to Jeremy Swayman. Pff, uh, it's so lucky. So lucky the Boston Bruins, those son of a guns. <laughs> I know, I know. And I believe our answer would be the same if we could pick one goalie from a non-playoff team. It's got to be Ilya Sorokin. Um, non-playoff team in the East? Yeah. yeah. Carey Price. Really? Yeah. I'm picking Carey Price. In a one even game? Though even though he's only played two games all year. I don't care. One game, I'll take I'll take Carey Price. I think he could get it done. Yeah, wow. absolutely. I'm taking the guy. I'm taking the guy who's second in the NHL in shutouts. I'm taking Ilya hey, Sorokin. Dude, I, and that's a, a totally. Fit. Mine's a bit of a shot in the dark. Yeah, mine's a bit of a prayer. But honestly, I I think I would feel comfortable and confident doing it. Yeah, I fair hope. enough. All right, let us know what you think. Always fun. I feel like drafts. We got to make that a part of our uh, Tuesday ritual here at Locked On NHL. Just quickly before we go, Mikey, we're gonna mix things up on the Locked On NHL channel this week. No longer are we just ranking the teams one through thirty-two on the power rankings. We know the playoff teams in the Eastern Conference now, so we are ranking in order of most likely to win the Stanley Cup. So it's the Florida Panthers, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Carolina Hurricanes, New York Rangers, Tampa Bay Lightning, Boston Bruins, Pittsburgh Penguins, and Washington Capitals. I don't need your entire list, one through eight, but give me your number one and your number eight. Who do you think is most and least likely? Well, I gave my number one earlier in the podcast. I started off with the Florida Panthers, so now you got to give us your number one. But in terms of number eight, are we including the injuries? Do the injuries? Yes, now they do for sure. Yeah. So with the injuries there, man, I don't feel good about Pittsburgh. I, I like Pittsburgh. Um, that injury to Tristan Jari definitely clouds things. And if they end up finishing, let's say third in the, regardless, if they finish either third in their division, they're going to have to play one of Carolina or New York, which good luck. Or if they finish in fourth and Washington catches up to them, they got to play Florida. Good luck. I'm yeah. saying at this point, hate to do it, but Sid and Gino and, and company uh, could be their final ride to try and win a Stanley Cup. But that injury to the goaltender, man, puts things into perspective, and I don't, I don't like their chances. I gotta say, yeah, I don't like their chances just based on the fact that they're playing my number one team, Mikey. You know, I've got my New York Rangers pajamas that I put on every single night, praying that they're gonna go all the way. Bet online is is going to need to buy some more or might not be able to afford some sponsorships mm-hmm. if the Rangers win because they're going to have to cash me out in, in terms of that. But maybe this is the low-hanging fruit, Mikey, but I'm taking the last place team. And there's still a world where they don't finish in last place because Washington all of a sudden has seven wins in their last 10 games. They're only three points back of Boston who have kind of faltered after a really hot stretch. They're five and five in their last 10. So maybe my answer changes because – I'm a lot, and again, there is still some movement to be had. The Rangers and Hurricanes right now are tied atop the Metropolitan Division. But let's say the playoffs, they start with Carolina going up against Boston, leaving the Panthers to go up against Washington. And that, as Daryl Sutter said, with uh, with whoever plays Colorado, it's just going to be 
a wasted week of hope. <laughs> that to me is what the Washington Capitals are going to face if they have to go up against the Florida Panthers. That team, we mentioned it, 12-1 and one in the Claude Giroux era. They are just a complete wagon. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not so sure that uh, that Washington ends up with a wild card spot. I mean, they could easily catch up to Pittsburgh here if, if the Penguins falter down the stretch. Yep. Casey DeSmith in net. So oh. I don't know, man. Like either way, I don't see either of those teams you know, really winning in the first round. Um, I think they'll both end up losing out. But Washington, they're three points back with two games in hand. They could easily get into the mix there do they play each other they might even play each other as well let me just check quickly Washington yeah yeah Let's see. in the meantime we'll tell you that you make sure you're locked on nhl is your first listen but we've got shows for every nhl team on the locked on nhl channel so make sure that you make another locked on nhl show like locked on leafs or locked on senators your second listen of the day they do not play each other but okay. uh they play the yotes they've got Two games against the Islanders and a game against the Rangers and the Leafs and the Lightning. Kind of a difficult skeddy actually down the stretch here. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe they don't. But either way, I don't feel good about uh, either Sid or Ovi making an appearance in round two. Well, next week, we will be that much closer to finding out the opponents of each team. And I'll be talking to you from the nation's capital. I'll be heading home to watch the Sens and Habs on Saturday night. Mikey, I'm already looking forward to our next conversation. Make sure to stay locked on NHL wherever you get your podcast and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It goes a long way for us. For Mike Stefano of Locked On Leafs, I'm I'm Ross Levitan of Locked On Senators. You know we've got your team every day.